The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, and welcome to the ELEX webinar on current developments in name authorities. I'm Amanda Stone, a member of the ELEX Continuing Education Committee. I will be your host for today's webinar. Our presenters today are Chu Chiat Nan and Jing Wang. Nan is currently head of metadata creation at Harvard Library. He is active in the Program for Cooperative Cataloging as co-chair of the Standing Committee on Standards. Jing Wang is the Systems Integration Engineer at John Hopkins University Library and has been working with various library systems, including ILS, Discovery, Research Network Systems, and Resource Sharing Systems. A few logistics for today's presentation. All attendees are muted to prevent background noise, and we do not have interactive chat capabilities. You may, however, comment on today's presentation using Twitter. The hashtag is ALCTSCE. We do not monitor the Twitter feed, so if you have questions for the presenters, please type them into the question box on your screen. We will have time for Q&A after the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and you'll receive an email with links to the recording and the presentation slides shortly after the presentation concludes. And now here is Nan. There will be a slight delay as we change presenters. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, uh, thanks for joining today's webinar on current developments in name authorities. Uh, my name is Chu Chet Nan, and I and my co-presenter Jing Wang um, were participants in the IMLS uh, Shareable Local Authorities Forum that took place uh, in 2016 and 2017. And that's what we'll mainly be talking about today. Um, I'll be talking about some of the themes that came out of the meeting, and Jing will be presenting the reference model that was one of the main outputs. Um, and that she uh, principally authored. I'm going to start with a few disclaimers. Um, this will be a fairly high level presentation and for the most part won't touch on the day-to-day -day practicalities of cataloging work, um, but perhaps we can go a little bit into that about uh, the impacts of it on regular ordinary catalogers at the end of the question and answer. Um, I'll be reporting on the work on, of a lot of people and on a lot of topics that are going to be outside my own area of expertise, um, uh, but I'll do my best. And uh, many of my comments will reflect my own academic library background or biases, if you like. But with those uh, disclaimers out of the way, let me talk a little bit about the background to this uh, grant. Um, it was a grant by the MLS to Cornell University Library, where I was working at the time. Uh, Jason Kovari and I were the PIs. Uh, we had a lot of input from uh, people like Stephen Folsom. And uh, our partners in the grant uh, included quite um, a large number of major players in this field. And uh, you see them listed there on the slide. Uh, the grant funded tra travel to the forum and uh, a little bit of staffing support. So essentially we got to organize our own conference on a topic of our choice. And uh, we also held some conference calls with presentations from some of the participants. Uh, there were two in-person meetings um, about six months apart. Um, and the report and reference model were published earlier this year. Uh, that's a partial list of participants. I won't bother reading through that, but uh, that'll give you a sense of who was at the meeting. So why were we interested in this topic? Um, Everybody taking part had a shared interest in identity data and in data that was rigorous and shareable and scalable. And if you take uh, a field that many of us are familiar with, NACO, uh, you'll know that it meets the first of those criteria, certainly it's only rigorous. It's shareable to a good extent, um, but scalable perhaps not too much. Um, authority data, data about personal, organizational work, geographical event entities. They're the kind of data that relates your collections to the outside world and other user communities. And so sharing becomes more important than the open ecosystem. Um, so we brought together a diverse set of stakeholders who had a strong motive to, to collaborate 
Uh, we knew we couldn't solve the whole problem, but we could share perspectives and experiences and perhaps create a common understanding of the issues. The other basic assumption we made coming into the meeting was that linked data changed the game for all of us. Um, we all knew our data was valuable, but also that it was locked up in silos and that there was a long tail of institutional authority files, uh, data from genealogical societies and so forth um, that was not generally available, but that could play a role in creating knowledge if it were to be shared. Along with that was an interest in addressing authority files as a cross-platform need that is not as something that would just exist within say your ILS or institutional repository, but something that could work across platforms. So we needed to understand the range of use cases that we needed to be thinking about. Uh, there was a chance to share solutions and uh, our forum actually included participants who had actually tackled that problem, um, at least within their own institutions. Um, um, projects like UNT Names and Opaque Namespace had, had done some work on that. Um, here's the obligatory illegible linked data uh, diagram. Um, this was actually a, um, a screenshot from something called RHEL Finder that was demonstrated to us by one of our participants, Carl Stamer. And what this one shows is a network of associations between two authors, Alice Munro and Margaret Atwood. Um, and the thing to notice about this is that um, uh, those associations were not hand-coded directly, but they illustrate what you can get when you identify entities and specify relationships across silos. Um, so this is, in a way, a, an illustration of what we were shooting for. Um, we obviously weren't doing this work in a vacuum. Um, this is a list of some related projects that were going on at about the same time. Uh, some activities within the program for quantitative cataloging. Uh, OCLCs had recently done its ISNI report. And there were a number of projects in Europe that uh, covered some of uh, the same ground. Um, I won't go into detail about these, but um, it's good to be aware of the, the background to, to the work that we were doing. Um, so here were some projects or undertakings that uh, were represented at the forum. Uh, there were local or regional efforts like uh, the two I've just mentioned, UNT Names and OPA Namespace, as well as a project that was also being funded by IMLS um, at the same time, that was the Western Name Authority file. Uh, there were disciplinary aggregations like the Union List of Art Artist Names by Getty and the Social Networks in Archival Contexts uh, project, and some perhaps more familiar cross-domain aggregations like OCLC. Uh, Europeana and ISNI. Um, some of those gay presentations at the forum, um, and you can still find those at the forum wiki if you'd like to take a look for them. Uh, there'll be a link at the end of the presentation. So here are some of the themes uh, that emerged, some of the things that we talked about. Um, we talked about, as I say, use cases and what I'm calling institutional mandates, um, what our institutions uh, uh, support as the reason for uh, doing authority work. We talked some about data models. Um, there was a lot of discussion about persistence, um, having durable data and what would be needed to support that. Um, obviously, a lot of discussion about workflows uh, and centralized and distributed models for that. Service layers and technical needs. And last but not least, social and organizational issues. And I'll talk a bit more about some of these. So um, institutional mandates. Um, so what I mean by this is that everybody was coming from a slightly different place. Um, uh, there were European libraries represented here by the British Library, uh, interest in building workflows for expanded collections. Uh, and that is where um, their interest in ISNI um, arises. Uh, OCLT and Getty were interested in requirements for aggregating and publishing linked data. Uh, we had um, at least one publisher um, represented there and they said they were interested in using identities, didn't necessarily consider themselves expert at managing them. Academic institutions we know want metrics. On the other hand, content providers um, are often interested in rights management issues. 
And some of those differences in objectives are reflected in uh, workflows, for example, um, self-registration in ORCID uh, as compared to third-party registration in, in ISNI. Um, modeling of data is uh, uh, a bottomless issue, but we did find time to uh, talk a little about some of the issues in that area. Provenance is one that came up. It's important in its own right to some communities, such as the archival, com archival community, um, less so to others. But as administrative metadata, it becomes uh, important in managing aggregations. Um, preferred labels, or what uh, we in the library world tend to think of as authorized access points, are a strong traditional focus, but they don't necessarily work well um, for interoperability or internationalization. Granularity of data in uh, such areas as how uh, hierarchies are represented or name changes can complicate identification across sources. Uh, more generally, compatibility of models becomes an issue, and I'll give you a small example of that. Um, so here we have J.K. Rowling as represented in the LC Name Authority file. That's on the little red boxes on the right there. And you'll see that uh, there are cases where um, pseudonyms are modeled as alternative uh, bibliographic identities um, in library authority practice. And you see an example of there of J.K. Rowling publishing under her own name, but also under the name of Robert Galbraith. Uh, Wikidata, on the other hand, um, gives Robert Belgraith, Galbraith as a pseudonym for J.K. Rowling, but you'll notice that it's the same identifier for both. So the, uh, Robert Galbraith is not um, identified as a separate um, um, persona. Um, before anyone asks, um, I don't know how library practice will change with the advent of LRM, um, but that's uh, a subject for another webinar. I mentioned social and organizational issues. Um, the way a body like, for example, the Program for Cooperative Cataloging responds to the changes that are happening. Uh, certainly there are questions around business models and licensing of data. The requirement for openness imposes some uh, requirements that we need to deal with, uh, privacy and confidentiality, but also uh, intellectual property considerations. And there can be external drivers such as um, uh, laws and regulations. Um, sustainability is a major issue. Um, we had people at the meeting like Diane Hillman who are very interested in this issue. And they would talk, uh, for example, about uh, sustainability even at the level of tools such as Open Refine. Governance becomes important because we need to adapt institutionally as well as technically. Um, our partnerships change, our workflows change, the functional requirements, they all change, and we need to be able to respond to them. Uh, we brought a NISO representative into the meeting to help us think through those issues. Um, a case of po in point that maybe some of you have been hearing about is uh, ISNI. Um, the stakeholders there have been uh, the European National Libraries, as I mentioned. Um, in the last year or so, um, the program for cooperative cataloging has uh, uh, been uh, investigating a, a group membership, but also involved in that community are rights organizations, particularly in the area of uh, music. So uh, they're interested in intellectual property. Um, and recently, um, ISNI, uh, announced a partnership with YouTube. So you can see how they're kind of joining together the different um, uh, use cases and the different communities that are interested in, in this, uh, the problem of identity management. Um, they're taking steps towards uh, addressing open data. So they have a linked data model that they've been considering and they've uh, published organization entities as, as open data. Um, They've also been addressing interoperability issues, such as a tool to uh, uh, translate between ISNI and ORCID. Uh, they've been working on their relationship with VIAF. And lately, there's been discussion about um, incorporating ISNI data in NACO, the NACO authority file. So what were some of the outcomes and directions that came out of the forum? Um, 
we talked a lot about uh, things that would be a good idea to do, um, sharing algorithms for matching, uh, needs or common or shared discovery. Um, these are areas of promising areas for further work and uh, areas that could potentially benefit from uh, standards or specifications. Um, I'll focus a bit more on the remaining three items in the list, uh, the minimum viable product discussion, um, something we called reconciliation as a service, and the responsibilities of providers and aggregators. So what do I mean by minimum viable product? Um, that's a phrase that's, um, a, I suppose, gained a, a pejorative connotation. What we're really talking about is the challenge of producing quality shareable data at scale and finding the right balance to allow that to happen. Um, there is a view which uh, I, I think is obviously correct that uh, traditional authority work is too labor intensive for our present needs. Uh, there was a sentiment at the meeting that we should aim to get our data out there, or as somebody put it, uh, you want to be able to do authority work without knowing that you're doing authority work. Um, within the PCC, there's been a lot of talk about a NACO light concept and ways we might uh, unpack that. And the emphasis moves from unique headings to uh, corroborating data, um, unique headings being uh, time consuming to produce, and also, um, uh, there tend to be diminishing returns when you try to uh, retain unique headings in shared, large pools of shared data. Um, it's, it's not a game you can really win. The value is in establishing identities and making them known um, um, and in providing structured data that can support matching and inferencing. So best practices might be domain specific. For example, um, one of our participants pointed out that um, if you want to provide uh, disambiguating data for musicians, uh, instruments are a good choice, more so than uh, information such as um, associated place. Um, you want to take advantage of contextual information, and you want to be able to capture information um, anywhere in your supply chain. So you need to address those recommendations to um, anybody who's participating, uh, including publishers. Um, Producing shareable data does produce does pose a greater challenge. Um, as we say in our report, shared data must be able to meet use cases outside its original purpose. Um, this is likely to end up being a discussion about workflow, about what data you can pick up along the way, how you code it, who can provide it, and when and how you can get it. Um, I've got a slide here that's out of sequence, so let me ignore that one. Uh, let's talk about responsibilities of um, providers and aggregators. Um, we had uh, Jennifer Gatenby from OCLC Leiden at the meeting, um, representing ISNI, and Jean Godby from the other OCLC in Dublin, that's perhaps more familiar to most of us. And this emerges an important theme at the forum. Um, there's a role for hubs like ISNI or ULAN in collecting and consolidating and distributing data, um, including packing it into um, suitable linked data representations. Uh, there's a role for them in uh, linking identifiers so that you associate identifiers from uh, different sources. Uh, and they have a role in uh, making the data available to uh, different user communities. Uh, they drew our attention to the W3C uh, data on the web best practices uh, document, but they also um, identified some particular characteristics of authority data um, that went beyond that, such as the importance of disambiguation and the need to support synchronization of data. Um, so here's a screenshot from the W3C best practices page and uh, even glancing at the list of topics on the left, a lot of those will look familiar to pretty well anyone who's uh, familiar with working with library metadata. Um, it has to be said our compliance with those recommendations may be variable. Um, uh, we tend to um, restrict provenance metadata to the record level. Um, our data is machine readable only to an extent. 
and we have a habit of minting our own properties rather than using existing ones. So we're only uh, part of way towards uh, meeting what the W3C uh, would like us to do. Providers have particular responsibilities. Um, the recommendations that uh, uh, Jennifer and Jean uh, uh, proposed included providing provenance data, such as sort of dates, sources, degrees of confidence, avoiding redundancy, particularly in proliferating local identifiers, coding disambiguating data in machine actionable fields, um, having workloads allow you to iterate based on reports, and providing persistent and lo local and public identifiers. They were representing the aggregator viewpoint, where they had a role to enrich and model and make accessible the data, but uh, depending on the mission of the aggregator, not necessarily to vouch for it. It's an interesting point that um, our Getty representative, Joan Cobb, made that um, uh, the aggregator may not necessarily be saying that uh, they are claiming all the data be accurate, only that they are reflecting the information that they've, they've pulled together from various sources. And uh, the best practices that uh, they proposed uh, include erring on the side of duplication rather than conflating entities, um, providing unique and persistent identifiers for the clusters they produce, um, again, recording individual data elements uh, and the provenance for them, using proprietary data even if you couldn't publish it, and providing a mechanism for enrichment correction, including uh, getting help from uh, outside. But how do we work with the data we actually have? Um, Tim Hill from the Europeana project and Peter Murray from Index Data uh, talked about this. And they talked about creating a specification for a stack of software and data that uh, harvest name authorities from local and aggregated sources. Um, so pulling together ISNI data, for example, and Vivo data or institutional repository data. Creating clusters and providing an API for an inter user interface to search and filter on the data so that um, metadata practitioners can actually work with the data. And of course, we do bits and pieces of a lot of this um, already. Um, what um, uh, Tim and Peter were suggesting was something more generalized, uh, more of a high-level framework that would serve a wide range of use cases and a wide range of different data sources that could be used by different players in a variety of situations uh, that wasn't dependent on a particular source or vendor um, and could work with degrees of confidence. Um, one of the ideas they proposed um, was that um, there could be a workshop for application developers as a separate um, uh, uh, meeting. Uh, that was a promising idea. We, we didn't pursue it at the time. Um, but uh, it's uh, perhaps something that may eventuate. Well, what's happened since the forum? Um, I mentioned the ISNI developments um, from that group. Um, I'm actually speaking from uh, uh, Berkeley in California where the Wikisite conference is happening. And if the forum were happening today, uh, there's no doubt that um, Wikidata, the Wikidata movement would be a major part of it. Um, uh, that was not yet on our radar in 2016 when we started. Um, infrastructure for hosting vocabularies continues to be a major issue. Um, there's been modest progress in a couple of areas. Um, some of you may have heard that the OLAC video game genre vocabulary has been published on metadata, the metadata registry. Um, and there are plans to publish RBMS vocabularies um, through LC. Um, these are not name authorities, but uh, uh, a lot of the same considerations apply. Um, mark provision for URIs has been expanded significantly through the work of the um, PCC URI in, in Mark. URIs and Mark task group, and just a full disclosure there, I'm a member of that group, um, where um, 
the objective has been to make Mark more hospital to more hospitable to data from non-traditional sources, and we're already seeing names supported by uh, subfield one URIs in OCLC. Um, I believe there is NIS, and uh, the LD4P two project, which is just getting underway, uh, includes. Um, um, investigation of ISNI and Wikidata as, as data sources. Um, let me just show you very quickly what, um, uh, why, why Wikidata is uh, becoming um, a point of interest. Uh, this slide shows you the growth of bibliographic items in Wikidata, and you can see uh, there's been a huge spike like within the last year. Um, Wikisite is a movement to promote open citation data, um, and that includes um, data of the kind that we as catalogers produce. Um, it addresses part of the infrastructure and tooling needs we talked about at the forum. Uh, tools for reconciliation, disambiguation are part of the project, as well as tools for monitoring updates. And they have data analysis and visualization tools. And not least, um, the Wikimedia movement offers an interesting alternative approach for governance. The old problems don't go away. Um, I looked up a couple of reports of uh, how authors are represented in Wikidata. Uh, the property for authors represented as identifiers is P50, which is that short bar on the top. Author name strings, which are what you and I might call uncontrolled names, um, are a much larger proportion. So clearly there's work here still to do. So uh, there's the promised link to the project wiki. There's a few uh, contacts there. You're welcome to contact us after the um, webinar if you wish. And with that, I'll pass it on to Jing. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, thank Alex for hosting and Markai for sponsoring this webinar. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Nan, Jason, and all the forum participants for the collective work done on this topic, especially Thank Nan and Jason for organizing the forum and uh, many conference calls for this. It's not an easy task to gather experts from all over the world and the different organizations to work together to reach a com understanding of the problem. So the collective work um, produced uh, two major out Puts. One is the white paper, which now has provided an overview. Uh, the other is the draft reference model for shareable local name authority, um, which I will talk about in the next 20 minutes. So what's the reference model? And this is the definition from the Open Archival Information System, OAIS, reference model document. It is a framework for understanding significant relationships among the entities of some environment. So the reference model is not, does not specify a design or an implementation, but it is for the development of a, a common understanding or consistent standards or specifications supporting that environment. So, the Open Archive Information System, OAIS, uh, reference model is designed to facilitate a broad, uh, discipline-independent consensus on the requirement for archive or repository to provide long-term preservation of digital information. So the environment for OAIS system is the producer, the consumer, and the management. And the entity within the system are those functions and the services for populating, maintaining, or accessing a wide variety of information, for example, uh, ingest, 
data access, provide access data and data management storage. These are all functional entities. The relationship is the interaction between the entities. An example is the producer submit the submission information package SIP on the diagram um, to OAIS, which process the archive information package AIP and sends the dissemination information package DIP to consumer. So the information package, um, the diagram on the right, uh, is a logical container that can be used to store information in the system or to transport the information among systems. So even though OAIS reference model is designed with a focus on preservation, the concepts in the OAIS reference model, such as the um, logical model of the information package or the functional entities, are applicable beyond the preservation community to general digital information management. Authority data is a type of information, um, usually digital, used and maintained across multiple domains. So the OAIS reference model is the de facto standard for building digital archives. It's widely used, uh, for example, used by networked European deposit library and the research library group and online computer library center and the library congress for hosting MATS XMM data packaging. You can see the full list on their website. So the shareable local name authority reference model reuse the concept of the OAIS reference model whenever applicable. Uh, there's a few new and modified concepts. The authority management functional entity is a new component developed based on the group's um, work specific to the authority management community. The authority sharing and planning functional entity and the authority information package are modified components based on the OAIS model. So before we describe the authority information system in detail, let's look at the environment first. I missed that page. Um, this shareable authority ecosystem is the system systems consisting of multiple authority information systems. Some local system at the institutional level, some are global aggregation system, such as ISNI. Each of the individual system is an independent system consisting of organizations, people, content, services, and systems. Then maintaining the authoritative registry of names for a specific community. Meanwhile, the various authority information system interact with each other, sharing data and services. The shareable authority clearing house is the common catalog of authority information systems, and it's a neutral independent organizational entity to facilitate discovery of all the various authority information systems. Please know that the clearinghouse and the global authority information system are different conceptual entities from the point of view of the reference model, but the implementation of either the clearinghouse or the global authority information system can be done by the same organization or on the same hardware software system. This is another view focusing on the relationships among producer, consumer, and management with the various systems. The authority management functional entity, AUG, um, in the diagram, it bridges the local authority information system and the external authority information system, either a local one or a global one. The services and functions within the authority management functional entity enables the two systems to interoperate with each other directly with the clearinghouse facilitation. 
the authority management functional entity includes local implementation decisions concerning data sources, ma matching algorithms, and the policies. This illustri illustrates the authority information system function entity within the shareable authority ecosystem. So the outside the blue uh, frame, that's the system of system, the environment where the authority information system in. The middle gray box indicates the individual authority information system. And each of these systems includes all of the OAIS functional entities marked in the green box with the addition of the authority management um, function entity. The authority sharing and the planning function entity on the top uh, is a modification of the preservation planning in OAIS model. So uh, let's focus, since the authority management functional entity is a new uh, component, uh, we will focus on this one. This is specific to the shareable local name authority reference model. Uh, it's an extension to the OAIS model. It handles the reconciliation, deduplication, synchronization among various authority information systems as well as the alignment of data model and the transformation of data. First step is to get data, select local or global data sources, get data from those data sources while they are ex access services. Second, it will match, that's a reconciliation, match text names to the name entities with identifiers, identifiers against data sources while the reconciliation service with specific algorithms returns a scored list of potential entity matching the specific criteria in order to obtain a identifier from the authority source. If there's no matches, if there's no match, register the persist register for persistent identifier with global authority identification systems either via self-registration or third-party registration. Um, if there's possible match, then it goes through the deduplicate process, resolve conflicts that arise when names are ambiguous, most often because there's more than one name objects with same or similar names. If there's an exact match, um, then it synchronizes the data from multiple sources. After this, it will publish the synchronized authority data to local authority information system as well as the global uh, aggregated information system. Submit the update to the authority information system for ingestion and the update the authority source description um, to the clearing house if necessary. So um, the authority information package, which is transported between all those functional entities, um, is a, this is the modification of the information package in the um, OAIS model. Um, it, Again, it is the logical container that used to store in the system or to transport among systems. It composed the name object, which is the data object for a person or organization with minimum identifiable information, such as um, identifiers, attributes, or relationships. The representation information describes the data model uh, used by either local authority information system or the global or external information system. The content refers to the authority data consists of one or more name object. 
the description for the authority source describes the authority information system in order to provide the context of that information package. Includes the service description for a service provided or used by local authority information system, and it included it's included in the informa information package so that two, uh, two authority information packages from the different systems can be matched, deduplicated, or synchronized. The policy refers to the institutional policy for local authority information system as well as the cross-institutional policy for global aggregated information system. The policy provides the usage agreement of information package concerning the social and organizational issue now has mentioned earlier, such as the licensing and the um, confidential and the data quality policy. As now mentioned, um, semantic compatibility or data model alignment and the data quality are major concerns in authority data management and sharing within the um, shareable authority ecosystem. Most of the functional entities in authority management model including match, register for persistent identifier, uh, synchronize, and publish the data. I include the process of aligning the data model of one data source to another, and the process of transforming the data according, accordingly. So, this is the overview of the draft um, reference model. Uh, this, this links um, to the full document for both uh, the white paper um, now has provided overview and the uh, reference model, as well as the OAIS reference model if you are interested in dive deeper. Um, Please provide uh, your feedback. Uh, as I said, the reference model is still in draft. We welcome feedbacks and suggestions. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, send us emails. Uh, we're happy to answer and uh, discuss further on this topic. Thank you so much um, to you both, uh, Nan and Jing. Um, if anybody has any questions, they are welcome to put them in the question box and we will relay them to the presenter. Um, and just a few, a few things. Um, can we, uh, one question was about the, the work that's being done on the permanence of authority data and of these tools. I know Non talked about that a little bit. Uh, okay, can everyone hear me now? Yes, yeah, we can. Okay, uh, so there's a question about persistence. Um, yeah. Um, that, that's a big question, but maybe um, one way to answer is to look at the way we've handled um, identifiers in, in uh, I suppose, um, uh, traditional practice. Uh, we've tended to have system-specific identifiers that um, would serve the purpose as long as you're on that system, but would tend to be concealed from outside sources and would change when you migrated. Um, we just had that problem actually um, migrating, or as it in the, as it actually happened, we're not migrating our local authority file here at Harvard. Um, there's a need to be able to associate ident identities with a permanent identifier, and that's partly something you want to design into your um, the way you manage your data. It's also partly a question of um, having a stable platform on which to um, uh, to host your data. And, and this is partly why the discussion about um, uh, being able to host data in a more or less permanent way has been such a, 
sort of difficult discussion. Um, so there, um, yeah, as I say, there's there's probably uh, a lot more nuances to this uh, issue sure. than I'm I'm mentioning, but uh, perhaps there, there could be follow up questions about this. Okay, uh, could you talk about the next steps for the system of systems uh, for your sharing name authority? I think they're just asking about um, kind of what your next steps are. Uh, Jing, is that you or me? I think that's you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let, we can hear both. Um, yeah, there's uh, a question actually um, I got asked um, when, when I presented on the forum at, um, at ALA about what the follow-up work was. And um, uh, we, the people, uh, the institutions with Tupanis Pharma are not collaborating on uh, follow-on work at the moment. Um, but that system of systems question doesn't go away. Um, I mentioned um, uh, ISNI, um, that was the, um, uh, that was well represented there from uh, Jennifer Gaten be a number of other participants there and and they're very much uh, uh, working right now on questions about how you can um, workflows for uh, bringing data into a central aggregation and uh, what sort of um, um, decisions you can make to help support that um, what sort of business infrastructure you need for example um, uh, the PCC would very much like to participate in, in ISNI as a body, um, but uh, we don't actually have a bank account, for example. Um, and so there, there have been workarounds needed to have that business relationship established, um, as well as the workflows for actually allowing, for example, catalogers to, to mint identifiers that, that are uh, outside um, what have been the um, uh, ISNI workflows up till now. Um, so so that might give you a, a kind of taste um, of perhaps not what not what grand plan we have for for um, uh, continuing with this work, but some of the steps that are being taken um, in response to those needs. Sure. Uh, another question we had was that these look like complex standards for everyone to implement themselves. Are there shared reference imp implementations that have potential for wide adoption? And almost sounds like there's sort of two pieces here. Um, how does sort of a single institution like, use these tools and then um, Oh, and then let's see. Well, maybe we'll start with that. Um, yeah, I, I think the question of a, a reference implementation is is a really mm -hmm. good one. Um, um, I don't know if I've got an answer to that. There's um, it's certainly work that that we do in in our regular. Um, um, uh, the course of regular work, we know that um, our our data gets fed into aggregations like VR, for example, um, and there are uh, advantages there and also known problems. I'm wondering if there's actually perhaps also something we learned from um, um, the local projects that I mentioned, um, uh, the Western Shared Name Authority file. Um, opaque namespace, UNT names that have tried to address this um, need locally. Um, I, I suspect, I can't speak for them, but I suspect there's, there's some uh, good lessons there. Um, something to hold up as um, uh, um, a model, I, um, I'm, I'm not sure I can offer that. Um, I, I think we're doing a lot of this piecemeal. and. Uh, um, yeah, I, I wish I had a better answer to that question. Sure, and I think this, you probably pretty much answered the, will there be any practical guidelines for local implementers um, coming out of this or related groups? And I think probably your answer of looking at related groups and how they implement. 
Uh, yeah, um, I think this is the kind of area where the, um, the PCC is running an ISNI pilot and um, um, I think we can expect to see some uh, best practices uh, emerge out of that um, with experience. Um, um, part of the question there is um, where these kinds of discussions happen and what sort of bodies um, uh, can speak for their communities. Um, the one I'm associated with is the Program for Cooperative Cataloging. Um, and I think um, uh, this you, you'll see some uh, attention to, to best practices for uh, non-traditional authorities coming out of PCC in the next few years. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't know if I have anything to promise right now. Probably not a good idea yeah, to promise. Um, I can add something uh, related to the, the previous question, actually. Um, I think both to this question and the previous question, it's in the system of systems, uh, it's less of planning, more of uh, evolving. I think as more implementation at the local level and the best practice and the guidelines and the discussion about the policies will start to service. So it's a evolving process rather than planning and implementation because of the sharing environment that this uh, system system is not in any single single organizations control it's it's yeah it's an evolving process okay uh, one one person asked if the slides will be available after the webinar they will you will get the slides uh, in an email afterwards uh, another question is are there any scalability challenges which i'm sure there are but if you could speak to some Uh, yeah, the, I think the short answer is definitely yes. Again, for a system of systems, uh, there's a balance between the global, the centralized versus local. Um, certainly, if everything shifts to the centralized, uh, the scalability will be a big challenge. So the, I think the trick is how we balance what to centralize and what to stay at the local level. Uh, I think we just need to figure that, figure that, but how to balance it. Nan, do you have any? Yeah, uh, I'm actually thinking, um, I, I haven't looked at the, um, uh, part of the participant list on this webinar, but um, if a lot of us are librarians, um, I think, we're very familiar with um, all, all of these types of issues. Um, for example, we can create data at point of need fairly easily. Um, we can, you know, uh, bulk generate lots of identifiers for names, but um, that's at the expense of um, not, uh, uh, not being able to match them up accurately later on with uh, properly established um, um, entities or authorities. Um, and, and we have that problem all the time, not just with, say, name authorities, but also with things like, uh, you know, bib records. Um, so um, the, these are problems that, um, you know, uh, the, the actual form of the, the problems is, is actually very familiar to us um, as, a, as a profession. Yeah, I think we also, another thing is we take advantage of the existing infrastructure. Um, for them, I'm very pleased to see wiki sites uh, coming along, uh, which, as you mentioned, was not on the ra our radar two years ago. But certainly, the existing infrastructure that helps uh, that's a big advantage. Mm. Great. Uh, those are all the questions that were submitted uh, currently. Um, so we're glad that you could both be with us today. Um, I wanted to let everyone know that if we do get any other questions, they have agreed to um, send the answers out to our attendees via email.
You will soon receive a short online evaluation form. Please take a few minutes to respond to the questions. Your comments are very valuable and they help the ELECTS Continuing Education Committee plan future events. The email will also include links to today's slides and recording, and you now have the opportunity to receive a certificate of attendance, and that information will also be in the email. I'd like to thank again our presenters, Chu Chat Nan and Jing Wang, and thanks also to the members of the Continuing Education Committee, Felicity Dykus and Catherine Balick, and also to Alana Warren from the Alex office. The support they provide makes it possible for us to present these webinars. Alex has other continuing education opportunities coming up. We have two more webinars this fall, the IFLA LRN model, a brief introduction, and I know that was mentioned during the presentation, and considering leadership. See the Alex website to register or find more information on these events. Alex also offers web courses, which are four to six weeks long, as well as two-day email discussions. And our next e-forum will be on December 11th on migrating technical services, systems, services, and staff. Check the website for information on upcoming courses and discussions. Thank you all for joining us today, and this concludes our session.